Building a dream home is generally not an option if you really want to live close to the city centre. However, John and Geraldine McCarthy have battled against the odds to do exactly that. John, an architect, and his wife Geraldine, an interior designer, already own this charming red brick Victorian house, but have always dreamed about designing and building their own house. And we're very fortunate to find the perfect site in their neighbor's back garden. This designer couple built an eco-friendly timber frame house. The house was constructed off-site and was assembled on-site in just one week. Hi there, John, pleased to meet you. Una, how are you? Great. And Geraldine, pleased to meet you. Come on in, out of this windy day here. Thank you. And this is the kitchen here. What a really bright, airy space. This is lovely. Very pleased with the kitchen, it's great, it really works very well. This is great, it's a foil between this area, which is our cooking area, and it's a nice place to sit and lounge on and you can put all sorts of food and everything out here. So is this the way you designed it from the outset? We were looking for something dramatic, so we have plenty of height, plenty of light. The light comes in from three sides as well as from the roof, and depending on the time of the day, and um, where the sun is shining, you know, it changes the character of the place and, and we love it. Well, do you know what I find really fascinating is how you're in the city centre here and you've got these beautiful framed views through the windows in this area, which makes it feel much bigger than it is. I mean, again, was that part of the overall design? Well, I think part of that is the fact that we're really in back gardens, you know, and we're hidden away. Yes, we are in the city, but it's, it's kind of a secret space in a way. We have the benefit of, of surrounding mature trees, which keeps it nice and quiet and secret. We have the garden out there and in a sense the garden comes into the living room and the living room goes out into the garden. And we have the sun lures or the free salai up here which reduce the solar gain in the summer. They act a bit like an extension of the ceiling. So the room seems that bit longer. We have the terrace here uh, and we can access that in a way that I like. We have these doors which um, we can open both of them. It's the room right out into the terrace. So, you know, we have the terrace, it's, it's really open, there's no column here at all. And, uh, you know, it really opens the thing out. What sort of style did you try to create around the house? Um, I think it's, I suppose it's a contemporary style. And uh, I wanted to keep the background and the palette of the main furnishings to a minimum. Try and keep your styles together is one thing that I have found. That um, Try and recognise what sort of style you're comfortable and that you're happy with. And how did you find furnishing the room? Not a lot of furniture in the room, but you know, you can fill a space um, by having your the chaise and then putting a little table. It helps to bring the whole lot like a picture. Will I show you the rest of the house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, down here we have the study. And it's the entrance to the basement um, down there. And along here um, you can see the basement now. I'm really pleased with the fact we have light going down to the basement here, we were quite concerned, so I had to fight for that glass, but I think it works. Due to planning restrictions, the house could only go up two storeys high. To create more room, they built a basement with a separate entrance leading to a self-contained area with a kitchen, plenty of storage, two bedrooms and a large family room. And even though it's all below ground level, the spaces are well lit with daylight. And uh, down this way is another bedroom and bathroom. And we'll go off up here upstairs. Again, it's very nice to have the glass balustrade here. And we're pleased that that worked out well. Up here I have two bedrooms. So this is the master bedroom in here. It's not 
too big a room, but we try and make it of a reasonable size. I see you've got a glass balustrade, which really allows you to open up the room. We're in the middle of the city, so it's lovely to feel that you're not hemmed in. So is this the ensuite? It is. Would you like Thank to you go in? Thank you. I wanted a bath um, and yet I wanted a good shower, so this is fulfilling both needs. I don't feel too guilty about using all the water because we have rainwater harvesting and also the solar panels give us hot water. We wanted a contemporary building and we wanted to use natural materials. The materials are very simple, they're zinc roof, white rendered walls, western red cedar cladding and aluminium windows. The only other element I suppose is stone to kind of ground the whole thing. Some architects find the, the marriage between contemporary architecture and eco-friendly architecture a difficulty. Was that a challenge for you here? No, I, I, I found it dovetailed very well. And from an ecological point of view, other things that we've done, I found it very much a, a help rather than a constraint. Did you learn a lot from the construction stage of the project? So, I mean, you tend to be quite hands-on, you know, as you know yourself, with projects, but when it is your own, and you see what's happening today. You know, it's, it's, it's great fun. I do think, maybe in hindsight, that John probably won't agree with me on, is that um, an architect, interior design, for both client and designer, and sometimes it's hard to know which hat you're wearing. So it mightn't have been any harm to have another architect alongside us sometimes. I don't know if we would have needed another architect, maybe a counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think two heads are better than one. And this husband and wife team have really built a stunning eco house.